Welcome everyone to Learning with Rev. In this video, we are going to be doing a second application of transfer learning. This time we are going to be using MobileNet version 3 instead of MobileNet version 2. On top of that, we are going to uh, see what the results are after adding additional augmentations with image data generation, image data generator. So what are the differences between MobileNet v2 and v3? You can go online and read TensorFlow's paper or, or or Google's paper, or uh, look at blog posts about it. But the shorthand is, we removed a lot of they removed a lot of the ReLU applications and swapped them with Swish and Hard Swish. These are different mathematical calculations that are used uh, to actually increase the accuracy. While there is a little bit of optimization, uh, it's a little bit slower to run that calculation, but the accuracy is much higher. They remove some layers that expand some of the uh, some of the data out into higher dimensions. They remove some of those, they just use normalization instead and pooling, and there were some additional op optimizations as well. The result of this is when we use the MobileNet v3 small, which is what we will be using, there is a large version as well. Uh, the large version will use about the same amount of memory as version two, but the accuracy will be higher. Version three small will use about half the VRAM and get almost exactly the same accuracy as version two. So this is just gonna be a quick go through. It's gonna be almost all the same code as the version two tutorial, which we did before. We have all of our imports here. Then we make sure that uh, it is only using, it's setting memory growth. Uh, it's limiting it to only whatever it's needed. Then we load our train and validation data here. Then we are gonna load MobileNet v3 small. Um, if you did notice one thing, we did not have a pre-processing layer here. That is because MobileNet version 3 has that pre-processing built into the network itself. This is probably another piece that improves the uh, speed because once it's all in tensors, it can run it in C or C++ and it'll be a lot better optimized than running it in uh, Python itself. So that is another change. These are exactly the same right here. These, these layers that we've added, include top equals false, same little error as before, which is fine. If we run a model.summary, this is a bit longer, but a lot of these are simple operations, like an add, uh, the same depth wise, there's just a basic multiply. So it does seem like it is a larger network, but it takes up much less VRAM. There's even more that's not even showing. But the total parameters of this one is about 2,000 or 2 million. Previously, it was about 4 million. And when we run this one more time and we scroll all the way down to the bottom here, we will see that uh, there's only 690,000 trainable parameters. So that is great. And now we are gonna train. Welcome back everyone. As you can see here, here, we've just stopped after a couple of epics and our accuracy is up to 99.89, which with 900 validation images, that means I missed one of those images. So essentially the same, but again, as I mentioned before, it uses only four and a half gigs of VRAM instead of nine. So now what we're gonna do is we are going to clear and restart everything here. And we are going to be adding some additional parameters to image data generator. So these are all augmentations that get passed in. The first one we're gonna do is we are gonna hit, we're gonna add a rotation range. Uh, this is gonna be an integer. So we'll make this, I don't know, 15 uh, with shift range, a float. Uh, so this would be fraction of the total image. We don't want it to shift too much, so we'll do that and we'll do height shift range, which is 0.2 also. So this is the percentage of the image that the image can shift. So no more than 20%, we don't wanna cut out too much of it. Brightness range. So brightness range is gonna be a tuple or a list, and it's gonna pick range from picking a brightness shift value from. Um, so this is gonna be floats, so we'll make this zero to 0.4. So it probably 
multiplies it by a factor of up to 1.04 in this case. Um, I am taking all these references directly from the TensorFlow API right now, uh, so I can give you good examples. Uh, we have shear range, which is a shear in a shear angle in the counterclockwise direction in degrees, but they want it also as a float. So we'll make that 0.3. Uh, then we're going to do zoom range, uh, also a float. Uh, let's see, we're actually, we can do from uh, 0 to 0.4 here. And that's about it. Now we are going to add these exact same parameters. Oops, highlighting this right here to our validation data. So this augmentation is not multiplying the amount of images we have. All it is doing it is adding these parameters to an images, images randomly getting passed in. So just want to make that clear. Some people think that when you add these augmentations, it's multiplying your images. It does not. It just augments the ones you already have. So now we can build our model just like before. And we set our bottom layers trainable, the rest of them not. And we'll hit train. And uh, I'll see you soon. I'll fast forward and we'll see how good our results are. And as we look back on this, as you can see, I did change the learning rate to 0 0.01. That is because it was training so awfully. And as you can see here, our accuracy is still super, super low. So this is probably because we added too many augmentations to our data. So I am going to pause this right now. I'm going to stop it. I'm going to restart it. And I'm going to clear all of our outputs. And we're going to go up here. And we are going to reset some of our augmentations. So this is what happens when there is too much augmentation in the image. I'm going to get rid of the shearing and the zooming because I have a feeling that might be what's causing the problem because of what the data looks like. Uh, shearing is a very, uh, it'll be very hard to see the shear. We'll allow a height and a weight shift um, or height and width shift. I'll reduce that to 0.1 each, just so they're not as extreme. And we'll lower lower our brightness range here. Um, and we'll let our rotation still be within 15. And this should have a lot better results. So let's see if we get better results. And I'll be back soon. So as we come back to this right now, we're going to interrupt our training. We will see that our accuracy has slowly increased over time up to 77 to 79%, but our validation accuracy has started to flatline around 80%. While this number is much lower than the expected number when we had no augmentation in image data generator, this is actually a more robust network. Let's say our uh, Accuracy was much lower with the other network without the augmentation. If we did this, our accuracy would be much higher. So that is why you want augmentation in your images, because you will not always have optimal images if you're applying this in real life. The same is with non-images too, but it's easier to explain with images. So I want to thank everyone for watching this video. I hope you learned something. In this video, we did go over using MobileNet v3 instead of MobileNet v2 and we added augmentations inside of Image Data Generator. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and share it. And if you have any questions, please leave it in the comments section below. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you next time.